Oh, my goodness. Tulsa was good. Tulsa was ready to play, weren't they? <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a game. Pretty sure that 14-point uh, win. Uh, pretty sure that people were expecting uh, that to not happen. But uh, what people don't understand is that there were two costly fumbles by our uh, main two backs, P. Ryan and Mixon, that could have really blown this thing out the door. Um, when uh, and really just put the hammer down a lot sooner than it was in the first half. But it didn't happen. We'll tell you why it didn't happen. Well, hey, we'll tell you how it really did happen. Plus. There's something cool that's happening now at OU. I'll get into it with another one of my boys, Chris Plank. Here we go. A review of last weekend's game against Tulsa. Stay tuned. Sooner, everybody. You know, I love seeing being where I sit now at OU. Uh, I'm able to see a lot of uh, cool things, meet a lot of uh, cool people, and I'm just uh, I'm gonna say I'm about three rows back from the uh, from the field, and uh, got to see another one of them on the field doing what he, doing what he does um, on my day off. Uh, Monday through Friday job, that is. And that would be my good old buddy Chris Plank, the Planker. Got, ran into him, got to say hi to him for a minute. And uh, speaking of Plank, this is really, 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 really cool. Um, remember uh, when podcasts first became really big and they released the coaches' shows onto your iPod or your iPads podcasting? Well, the podcasting crew at Oklahoma is back, and now it's it's very different. It's not the same as it was before with um, with the coaches. In fact, it's now hosted by my buddy, one of my many dogs at OU, besides Baker Mayfield, still love you, buddy, in Chris Plank, and he interviews different people. Like, I, he interviewed a, 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 a roughneck uh, last week uh, for the Tulsa game because it was the anniversary for the roughnecks. Um, so, and this weekend, he needs our help, Sooner fans, because he's trying to uh, do a 1985, uh, it's basically the 1985 reunion. Uh, Spencer Tillman's going to be back. Boz is going to be back. Uh, Casillas is, they're all going to be back. Switzer, Casillas, everybody's going to be back for a big uh, halftime celebration. And um, he's going to obviously want to do a West Virginia pregame, much like this. But he also wants to do kind of a, a fan's perspective of it. Um, so emails, pictures, videos, tweets, anything you have, any remembrance that you have from that 1985 season, uh, send them to my buddy Chris, uh, Chris Plank uh, at Plank Show. ChrisPlank at gmail.com, I believe. Or uh, you can Facebook him, Chris Plank, and you, you'll know it's Chris because it'll be talking about the uh, podcast. So uh, help my buddy out. Uh, should be fun, by the way, for that. Speaking of the football games, speaking of reunions, they had a reunion of the uh, most of the championships before the 85, the uh, – up to the 75, I guess that would be, for the Tulsa game. That was uh, 
as far as this version of the Sooners is concerned, a little bit closer than you might think. Uh, 52-38, that's two touchdowns, 14 points. But um, it was a good test because this is basically the same offense that you're going to be facing here in Wacko Waco uh, towards the end of the year. So it's easy to uh, get it ready in the preset, uh, get what you need, do a lot of this video watching and, and be able to observe uh, what you did and did not do right defensively. Um, did a lot right offensively. In fact, let's get right into that offensively. Statistics. Statistically, uh, Dane Evans, number nine for Tulsa, the quarterback, he, uh, he, he uh, threw four touchdowns and did a rushing touchdown last weekend. My boy, Bakes, the Baker, Baker Mayfield. Uh, 487 yards passing, four touchdowns in the air, two on the ground. That is six touchdowns, which ties Quentin Griffin from the 2000 National Championship game uh, season, the game specifically against Texas. So that has been tied by my boy, Baker Mayfield, there. Rushing-wise, speaking of Quentin, you all know he was a rusher. So rushing wise, uh, number 24, Chris Langer for uh, Tulsa. Uh, Langs had uh, 31 carries for a buck 61 and did have a touchdown in the game the other night against o uh, last weekend against Oklahoma. Well, uh, number 32, Samaj P. Ryan was the sooner to watch. 22 carries, got back on the 100 yard mark with 100 and. Uh, 54 yards on the ground, and did have a touchdown. Offensively, uh, both number threes played great football the other night for Tulsa and Oklahoma, respectively. The number three for Tulsa, Kiaris Garrett, uh, 14 catches, a buck 89, did have a touchdown in the air receiving. As far as we're concerned, our boy, of course, we all know who that was. Uh, that would have been Sterling Shepard, who had uh, eight catches for a buck 44 and zero touchdowns in the air last weekend catchings. Uh, defensively, number, th number one, Michael for Tulsa, 16 tackles. No turnovers on that side. And at number four, Atari Bird for Oklahoma. 13 tackles there. Zero turnovers on that side for him also. Uh, Kicking-wise, uh, this is where Oklahoma sort of got uh, sort of the advantage um, a little bit more here uh, because uh, they were one for two. Numbers, number 19, Jones Redford for Tulsa, one for two, uh, made a 31-yarder for a long, but his shorter run of 23 yards was blocked by uh, Devontae Bond. So, uh, pretty impressive uh, there that it was blocked. I guess the uh, he made the 20. He made the 23-yarder, so 23-yarder was his long. Uh, Austin Seibert, 20, was his long. One for one. Number 43, Austin Seibert, did well again with another field goal. punting wise Dalton Parks for Tulsa, seven punts, 39.6 in average. Two landed inside the 20-yard line. No touchbacks, and 55 was the long. Austin Seibert, people. The Sibes. Scoring 52 points, you would think that he didn't have to punt very often, and he didn't. But when he did, he punted twice, averaging 44 yards a punt. Uh, two landed inside the, uh, they uh, both, zero landed inside the 20-yard line. 55 was his long. The scoring sidelines for the teams. 
Uh, we'll start with Austin Seibert. Uh, Austin Seibert started everything off with a 20 yard field goal up and good. We have a 3 uh, 0 lead for the Sooners at 12 03 left in the first quarter. Then, to tie up the ball game, Red, uh, Jones Redmond hit a 23 yarder right down the middle. Uh, to tie it up at threes. 3 3, 8 04 left. And we have a tie at threes. Then my boy, Baker Mayfield, bakes and shakes his way free uh, with a 39-yard touchdown keeper uh, with 4.54 left to put the Sooners up 10-3 to three. Sooner Boomers. Then, my boy Bakes, with his second touchdown uh, overall, when he found Joe Mixon, number 25 Joe Mixon, on a twin-yard touchdown pass with a buck 18 left. 17-3, Sooners feeling good there. 17-3 as we go to break. Second quarter. Another selfie for my boy Bakes, Baker Mayfield. Eight-yard touchdown option run. 13-31 left. 24-3 Sooners. And we're feeling good. We're feeling great. And we're looking good offensively. But uh, that's when things got interesting. Because with 6-20 left in the second quarter, Dane Evans finds uh, number 88 Josh Atkinson with a 18-yard touchdown pass, 24 to 10. Sooners though still on top. Then probably came, well, Baker did it all. He did the short passes, he did the keepers, he did the long ball and the short ball, and even did like a Johnny Manziel-esque kind of a kind of a play. Here's the deep ball. It was a pretty good double move, by the way, by Mark Andrews. But anyway, Baker Mayfield, 61-yard touchdown pass to number 81, Mark Andrews, with 3.14 left, 31-10 Sooners. Sooners still in good shape here. Then it starts to get, as I said before, it starts to get a little bit more interesting. As number Nine, Dane Evans has a 28-yard touchdown pass to number two, Caden Lucas, with 13 seconds left. 13 or 31, 17 Sooners. Then it gets a little bit more interesting after a swib kick recovered by Tulsa, because there's a 43-yard touchdown pass to number three, Kearis Garrett, with just one second left. Sooners in his style. Sooners. Still ahead at halftime, but only by a touchdown, 31-24 Sooners. Second half. Kind of the uh, medium range touchdown for Baker. When Baker Mayfield, 29-yard touchdown pass to Jarvis Baxter. With uh, 647 left, 38-24 Sooner Boomers still ahead. But with 4.01 left, number 24, Zach Langer says, hey, Tulsa's not just going to go and hide. They're going to get right back in this ballgame. And they do again get back in the ballgame. 38 to 31, Sooners up on top. Then came that special play that I mentioned, that Johnny Manziel-esque kind of a play, where number six, Baker Mayfield, breaks the pocket. Finds no one open, keeps the play alive, and eventually finds number 81 Mark Andrews for a 17-yard touchdown pass with 40 seconds left, 45-31 Sooners. 
Then the Sooners started to pull away a little bit more in the fourth quarter because with 428 left, Samaj P. Ryan, number 32 Samaj P. Ryan, coming back from his injury, had a 20-yard touchdown run. 52-31 Sooners, and every, everybody was feeling good at this point. 21-point win, beautifully done. But then a garbage touchdown by uh, number 9, Dane Evans, to number uh, 2, Kaver, Kevin, Kevin Lucas, 40-yard touchdown pass, 52-38 with 3.38 left. 52-38, your final score. Riley's right call of the game. I think the play of the game for Lincoln Riley in this offense was the long ball that was thrown. Perfect in stride. Uh, Mark Andrews doing a double move. 61-yard touchdown pass from my boy, the Bakes. Baker Mayfield. Stoopsy stop of the night. Fourth and three. Uh, Zach Langer tries to find a hole in the line. Can't find a hole in the line. And is actually pushed for only a yard gain when he needed two or three yards. Stopped by number 93, Charles Walker. And number 23, Devontae Bond. And a special appearance. By special teams. The aforementioned number 23, Devontae Bond, uh, blocks a field goal by number 19, John Redmond, recovered at midfield by number 13, Ahmad Thomas. The Sooners will now head uh, for a bye week. So, no post game video. The next pre game video that we'll, we'll do will be against the Mountain Men. Brad Paisley's Mountain Mama of Morgantown. They'll be in Norman in uh, two weeks. By the way, for that game, if you haven't heard yet, they're striping the stadium again this year. Um, we did this for West Virginia last time in. We did it for Tennessee last year. Uh, even for Notre Dame, I believe, a, a few years back. What they'll do is take a look at your ticket that you have. If you have an even ticket, you wear your crimson. Plop, something crimson-esque. Something OU crimson. If you have an odd number, pull out something white, cream. And uh, that will be, that. this is confirmed now, an 11 a.m. kick again. And as I said, it, it, they'll be celebrating the 1985 National Championship team. Uh, so if you have any cool stories from that season, um, like, uh, like I really can't remember any because I was only three when that happened. But maybe you were a little older, maybe you're all, uh, like five or six, and you can actually remember what you were doing. If you have any of those cool stories that you actually do remember, like what you were doing, like it's your first time that your dad let you stay up late with him and let you finish the game or something like that. Like I said, those stories... My buddy Plank, he wants to hear him at Plank Show on Twitter, or you can email him, uh, chrisplank at gmail.com. He'll read some of those tweets on a on the new live, uh, I guess it's not live, but the new OU pod uh, cast. Uh, so look for that. Um, I believe that's about it. Uh, as we've already mentioned, Sooners survive a hurricane, the hurricane of Tulsa. 52-38, your final. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. My name's Harry James Taylor. Type it into Facebook. Find me, Harry James Taylor. Or you can tweet me, at SoonerFanOK. I also periscope occasionally, not all the time, but occasionally. I am there, at SoonerFanOK. Thanks for watching, guys. And have a great bye week. And as always, Boomer Sooner, everybody. Take care.